Hey YouTube, Sam here. Well, I'm working on my RV. And uh, these batteries right here are some uh, AC Delco. And they lasted quite a while. They're the uh, marine RV type batteries. And they are 12 volt. But I've had the trailer probably going on about three years now. And I've decided to upgrade because last year I was having a little bit of trouble. I was ending up on my generator about every day and still not quite in, ending up with enough uh, power by the end of the night if I was running heat, uh, which quite a few times we were running heat and ended up running out of power in the middle of the night and I had to go start up the generator. And I'm hoping I don't have to do this anymore by going to some 6 volt golf cart batteries. I got two of the interstate 6 volt golf cart batteries and I know you're saying well you're going from 212 volts to 26 volts uh, how does that work and quite honestly I am not sure how it all works but according to most people and I'll let you argue amongst yourselves out there in the comments if you'd like uh, two 6 volt batteries will last at least longer than three 12 volt batteries uh, and for sure, since these are brand new and those are several years old, I don't know exactly how old, uh, these will last longer for a while anyway. So I'm going to test that theory out myself. I have two 6 volt batteries. I'm going to hook them in, I believe, in a 12 volt battery, basically. And uh, like I said, you guys can argue much yourselves. I end up with one 12 volt here compared to two 12 volts there. But it's, it's not always volts. In fact, it doesn't volts don't mean a whole lot it's more than amp hours and these supposedly have more amp hours between the two of those than those in amp hours between the two of those so that is how i have come to know things as far as the way it should work whether or not it really does uh we'll see these were on sale at Costco. Um, they weren't even on sale. It was their regular price and they were a really good deal. So if you have a Costco by you, you might go check this out if you want to do the same thing I'm doing. Oh. And one other thing, speaking from experience, car batteries don't work worth a damn. Uh, just so you know. And you need to get at least a marine or uh, deep cycle some sort of battery. Uh, at the very, very least. Don't try car batteries. They just don't work. They're not made to be for the voltage to be taken dropped really low on them and then be charged back up and then drop the voltage low they're made to stay at a steady charge all the time that i do know and i have tried car batteries it don't work I received me. this uh, i went online and i bought this it was definitely the cheapest way to go i went to several rv places around me and they were quite a few dollars more if not even in the hundred dollar more range than just buying this off of Amazon. Um, so that's the one I'm getting. It's the IntelliPower uh, Recreational Vehicle Converter Charger uh, from Progressive Dynamics. Um, the only reason why I'm going with this one is because in the midst of my YouTubing and looking at other people and what they're doing with their RVs, this seems to be the one that comes up a lot on YouTube. So I'm going to try it out. That's and the reason... And then behind the fuse panel down here, hopefully you'll be able to see this. I got a flashlight in here right now. Uh, through my closet and through the floor of my closet, you can see the old charge converter. Uh, it is a Series 7400 UL listed 40 amp, uh, which the one I'm changing to from Intel is a 60 amp, so that ought to help change uh, charge the batteries up a little quicker. But anyhow. Uh, these tend to dry out batteries, especially like the golf cart batteries I have now. They are open uh, where you have to put water in them and uh, keep track of the water and make sure they don't get discharged too much as far as water. Uh, as far as the older ones, they are were completely sealed and you didn't really have to do anything with those. And to be honest, I really... I don't know. I don't know. Has it ruined the batteries? I think I can still get some more life out of those batteries, especially if I can charge them up with this uh, Intel one that I got. Uh, it bumps up the charge whenever it feels like it needs a little bit more charge. So, um, 
Anyhow, that's the reason I'm changing this out. Here is the problem I'm having is several people said, well, you can go down here and you can flip off a switch on your uh, breaker panel here and it'll shut this off and you can use that other one. Well, if I unplug this from the back of this here or switch off this down here, if for some reason I'm plugged in and my batteries aren't working right, um, and I believe even if I'm plugged in, that runs a lot of the 12 volt system in this trailer. So uh, I don't believe if I unhook that or switch off the, uh, the fuse down here, uh, it doesn't seem my lights, my 12 volt lights that are in the trailer here and like the fan on my stove and a few other things don't work because they need that uh, connection between the 12 volt. Well now I could put my Intel power charge controller in here, the new one, and just switch out for this one. Problem in that is that the wires down here are not super thick or not as thick as they could be uh, as far as the size of the wire and it goes from here God knows where down under the trailer and all the way up to the front of my trailer which is a good I don't know 15 10 15 feet well that doesn't make for very good charging as far as the batteries are concerned uh, it it takes this new charge controller and cuts down on the, the abilities it will have so what I'm gonna do and you can look I made a video on actually uh, making this all open under here where I can actually flip this up and close that off and it used to be just screwed on there but I have a ton of space down here and my batteries are right on the other side of that wall so I'm going to go ahead and put this down underneath here and mine is supposed to be anyways the 60 amp version uh, which it is so 60 amps right here model PD9260C so that's the one I got um, I don't know up from down whether or not uh, this was a good idea or not but it seems like several people have gotten this one and it seems to charge the batteries faster especially if you're out boondocking and need to charge with a generator. Here we are underneath my uh, couch area it's a couch slash bed area and that's where this is going to be uh, you might notice this box back there I'm putting a plug in right there uh, I'll finish that up a little bit more and then tell you more about that but anyway right now it's just the box here I've drilled the holes where I'm gonna bring my power up through I've also drilled holes right there where I'm bringing the two battery cables through and those will hook right to the front of it there and also uh, there's a ground here and I got a hole where the ground's gonna come through uh, also in that box and then it's going to come out and around. So, uh, underneath this area there's a bunch of wiring for the trailer and there's actually an access panel that I'm drilling through um, so that's kind of part of the reason also why I'm drilling the holes where I'm going. Uh, pretty much this is going to be my power cord coming in and uh, basically I'm making this right here. Uh, it's an extension cord with some plugs on it basically. I actually have another video where I made something similar to this. Uh, you can go check that out if you're just interested in just having a extension cord basically with a couple plug-ins on the end of it as long as you want. Um, but anyway, that's another video. What we're doing right now is this box. Uh, it'll become more apparent of what I'm doing later on in the video, but right now uh, I just got a metal box. I got a couple of these uh, clamps, uh, these are just uh, clamp wires here so you can't pull them in and out. Uh, I got a couple of wires, these are going to be grounding wires. Uh, one is actually going through here, the other one is going to be coming up from the bottom. I'm going to put them together with uh, one of these and ground it basically to this box. Uh, the one coming out here is going to be going to the charge controller. The one coming through the bottom is going to go directly down to the chassis of the trailer.
Now, as far as wires and what you want to use, uh, I'll let you do your homework on what gauge wire you think you need. Uh, this is what I'm using because it's what I got and I think it'll work just fine for what I'm doing. Uh, and I'm using white for a grounding wire because basically in RVs and trailers, uh, grounding is a lot of t most of the time white. Um, it's more like house wiring, really. Uh, anyhow, so that's what I'm using. So I'm going to go ahead and get that together. Uh, I have another, where it go? Another one of these for the bottom. Now with this one, I'm actually going to put it on the inside of the box. This is not normally how you want to do this. You normally want to do it like this one here, but because I am sticking this directly on my floor, let me get this down in here. There we go. Because I'm sticking this directly down onto my floor, uh, this sticks out a little ways, and and I won't be able to. This part of it right here, where the screws are, would be going down into the floor where I couldn't get to them. So next best thing is to do it this way for me. I actually drilled a hole where this will actually fit down in there. Uh, so it'll hopefully sit for the most part flat. Actually might have to make it a little bigger because of this here. I didn't think about that. Uh, it's where thinking ahead helps. But I'll deal with that later. And basically this is what we got. We got that there. That right there. Now I'm going to stick these through put one of these and on. that's what we got so far I wound up having to do two separate ones just to try and fit five pounds of you know what in a one pound bag anyway that's what we got uh, there is just a screw right here normally uh, you'd want like a it's a green screw but this box is one I had didn't have a screw this is actually I don't even know where I got that from but it fits in the hole and it works now, something I did do, I put a little bit of this uh, no locks on there. Um, mainly, as far as I know, which I don't know a lot, admittedly, uh, this that's kind of made to keep from dissimilar metals from corroding. Uh, when you get, you know, two or three different kinds of metals going on here, uh, you can have some corrosion problems. Anyhow, so I'm using that on all my terminals and stuff when I hook them up especially the ones outside. Those are ones I'm worried about most. So I got one wire going through here, one wire going through here. And again, this one's gonna go to the charge controller. This one's gonna go directly to the chassis ground. Next up will be what I'm using here, uh, an extension cord. And an old extension cord that I've cut the ends off of because the ends were no good. Um, I'm only gonna use probably five foot or so of this and I'm going to shove this up through the bottom here because it's going to go down and outside the trailer. Um, basically what I'm doing this for is I don't want I don't want the uh, extension cord for the charge controller if I can figure out how to talk. Uh, charge controller sticking out of the bottom of the trailer and I don't want to have to run an extension cord in through the door of the trailer to make my charge controller works so that's what this little thing's for um, really if you wanted to and yet again I'm not responsible if you do and burn down your trailer uh, you could put something like this anywhere in your trailer and have kind of a, a separate plug-in area to to just have a plug-in anywhere you want I got this stuck up through here got those in there um, admittedly this is not the most ideal choice for uh, doing the, the wire crimp here but really all I did was take a, a little flathead screwdriver and I can manipulate these pretty well so that is how I'm going to do it because of my situation uh, preferably you want to do it like that so now you're going to take and you're going to hook this to this and I got a separate video on doing that so in the interest of making this video just a little bit shorter I am not going to show that part but basically you're just going to hook this on to these wires the way you need to do it yet again go look at my video if you don't know how and uh we'll go from when there. it's all said and done it's gonna look something like that a um, couple things about this uh for you eagle-eyed viewers i decided to put a gfci outlet on it better safe than sorry it doesn't fit 
great in this box it's a little big for for this one so if you're gonna do the same thing and you're just gonna go out and buy stuff I might look for a deeper box and also when I got this plate they didn't have these are the only plates I have and I know they make a plate like this that actually butts right up to the um, these bo these metal boxes so that they don't stick out a long way um, but for my purposes this this should work perfectly fine um, if I have any problems with it I'll let you know now I get to take it all apart and actually mount it to the floor down there so when I get that done I will show you what's next I drilled this out to the size of hole I'm thinking that just the uh, wires pretty much fit through and then I ream this out a little bit more so that the top part of the box that that uh, piece that holds the wires uh, firmly into the box can kind of stuff down in there so hopefully this will mount to the floor pretty again hopefully flat. you can see this I got the ground wire here that's going to go to the chassis going down through there and then the power wire that's going to actually hook to whatever power source I plug it into and that hopefully should sit just like that plug a loo in there but first I have to take and throw a couple screws down in here here we are uh, now you notice that wire that's going to go to the charge controller ground and these wires right here those are the black is going to go down to the ground on the chassis as well and the red is actually going to go to the positive charge of the controller here right now i got it free now i did hook it to the ground earlier um, and actually where i hooked it, it's going to be too close was too close to these wires and i couldn't get them in um, so the best best idea is at the very very end we'll hook this down to the floor um, right now i got to put the negative oh you know what I kind of push these through the wrong holes I might go back and do that but anyway negative goes here and this one and I'm going to put the positive in this one um, now this does take an allen wrench that did not come with the kit and honestly I don't know what size it is I just kind of went until I found the right size um, but that is uh, that is about the size if you can tell it's not super big but that goes in here and uh, you loosen these up and then we will hook All them in. All said and done, I went ahead and switched those over so that the black was on the right side and uh, so that everything kind of lined up better. I got those in. Now, those are 2 aught cables and I have to say it says you can use 2 to 14 and generally in these kind of situations you want to use the biggest wire you can but honestly those are a real bear to get in there and I'm, I ended up losing a couple of um, strands anyway so I would probably go with the next size down personally if I had to do it all over again but I had these made up so I'm not gonna uh, waste them they'll work uh, just fine if not a little better than a smaller sized um, here's on the back that white one right there that is the, going to the ground on the back of this and that goes around and into the box which you can't see anymore that is behind um, the charge controller right here I'll see if I can show it to you anyway into the box there um, I still have the charge controller unplugged I haven't plugged it in I don't even have the other stuff hooked up at all on the other side there's no batteries out there there's no uh, plug-in or anything that I haven't plugged into yet right now this is pretty much just buttoning up the inside that's pretty much installing that charge controller right there and depending on how long this video is as of here I may consider this a video uh, in that case uh, keep an eye out for the second video on uh, hooking up the charge controller to the batteries and all the stuff under the trailer I'll go ahead and do that probably in another video we'll see if I can put them together but if that is the case go check out that one and this is Sam Jack of all master none y'all have a good one